Hi, I already did a video in which I presented the Gatemate FPGA board from Colonia Chip to you, which you can see here on my webcam. And today I want to show you how to install the toolchain for the Gatemate FPGA board and run a sample FPGA design. So if you are having FPGA boards from Xilinx or Altera, normally you can download huge IDEs on the development or on the vendor's web page, but for the gatemate, you only have to download a very small toolchain and everything is controlled over make files. So you can run it in your terminal, which I find is pretty cool. Okay, so where can you find the information about the toolchain installation? Well, of course, on the Colonia chip webpage. So here I'm on the web page, and if I go to programmable logic, gatemate FPGA, and if I click on documentation here, we can see all the available documentation for the gatemate. And here we have a document called gatemate toolchain installation user guide from January this year, so quite recent, and this will describe the toolchain installation. So let's take a look at it. Okay, here we have the contents. Let's take a look at it. And uh, basically, first we have the introduction, which will tell us which parts or which parts the toolchain need. Then we can download a pre-built toolchain or we can build the toolchain from source. I'll go with the first option. Here we have some optional simulation tools if you want to run tests or simulations. I won't use this in this video, maybe in a later one. And last but not least, we have a quick start, which will show us how to get sample applications for the FPGA board up and running. Okay, so let's start with the toolchain overview. Basically, here you can see the flow which is necessary to get an FPGA design up and running on your board. The first phase is called design entry. So if you want to describe FPGA design, you have to use a hopper description language. And with the gatemate, we can use Verilog or VHDL. I will go with VHDL because this is what I've learned in university and this is with which I'm more comfortable. And you can think of this design entry phase like creating the source code in C for C programming. Then in C programming, the next step is to compile the program into an object file. On FPGA designs, it's, a little, it's similar, but of course, at the end, you won't get instructions for your processor, but instead you will get how you have to wire logic cells to get the functionality you have designed in your design entry. And this step is called synthesis here. We will use Yosis, the open synthesis suite, for doing so, and this will generate or this will convert our Hopper description language into a netlist. So the netlist already tells us how logic cells must be connected together. We can use the netlist to run tests and simulations on our PC, but we can't flash the netlist on our FPGA board because in the netlist, it, the netlist doesn't tell us which gates or which logic cells in our FPGA have to wire with which other logic cells. So this is a little bit platform um, FPGA board independent, yeah. So this, you can think of this a little bit like an object file in C programming. So if you have an object file, the last step is you have to link it so you can run the application. And here the process is quite similar, but the linking stage is called implementation here. And basically what we are doing in the implementation is we take the netlist and we place and root the logic cells, it, it's des described in the netlist and place it on our FPGAs and we are routing the connections like described in our netlist. The result from this place and root step is we will get a bitstream. And this bitstream now really has information which logic cells in the FPGA board has to be connected to which other logic cell in the FPGA board. And the last step is the configuration, so we have to flash the bitstream on the FPGA itself. Okay, <laughs> cool. Maybe let's yeah turn off the webcam here. So that's basically the flow when you're designing an FPGA design. 
But how can you get the toolchain? Well, if you want to go with the pre-built toolchain, you have to create an account at Colonia Chip and then you can download the toolchain. So let me click this link, then I will, I have already logged into it and up here I have this my gate made drop down menu and if I click on software download, you can see here I can install or I can download the toolchain here. It's available for Windows, for Linux, and down here we have the release notes. And of course, I will go with the toolchain package for Linux. And you can see the toolchain here is only 27 megabytes in size, so really not too much. Okay, so now let me extract the toolchain. And now we have the toolchain installed on our system. So let's take a look what's in this toolchain. So here we have a binary folder containing the tools mentioned in the um, implementation flow. So we have the open FPGA loader for flashing a bitstream on our FPGA board. We have a place and route tool and we have Yosis. And you can also see we have a workspace here and in this workspace we can find some sample applications for our um, gatemate FPGA board. And I told you everything is built with make files and this config.make is basically the config for our make files. So let's navigate into the workspace and let's open up the Blink project. So we have these folders with tree we can see a little bit more about this. So we have a make file to build to build the project. In source we have our hardware description descriptions, one time as a Verilog file and one time as a VHDL file. And we have this config file here. So let's take a look at it. So this config file tells us how or which pins of the FPGA board should be used. So in our design we have a clock pin and or a clock input and this should be connected to this physical pin. Then we have a reset input and this should be connected to this physical pin to which a button is wired on the evaluation board. And then we have this LED output which should be connected to this physical pin which is wired to an LED on our design. So let's open up the, um, yeah, the VHDL sources for this. So this I will only go over this very brief. So basically first in the entity we are describing the pins of our design and here again we can find a clock, a reset and the LED pin. And then we are describing the architecture. So first we want to use a phase locked loop. So we can have a clock here and we are configuring it up here. And here we are wiring, or here we are creating some signals. So this counter here is uh, is a variable which is 20, 27 bits in size. And in the architecture, we are describing how everything should work. So basically, here, if we have a rising edge on the clock and the reset button is pressed, then we will set just set the counter to zero. And if the reset button is not pressed, we will increment the counter by one. And here at the end, we will set the LED output bit to bit 26 of our counter. That's basically it. And this hardware description language will be implemented in hardware. So we or in logic gate. So we will actually use some yeah, latches for this counter variable, for example. Okay, so now, yeah, and here in the simulation, we have a test bench for our Blink program. So this is in Verilog, so I don't know if I'm able to tell a lot what's going on here, but let's take a look at it. So basically this should just yeah, it should it should just um, yeah toggle the clock sometimes so we can see what's ongoing. Okay, so now let's try to compile 
or to create the bitstream config bitstream from this hopper description. So for doing so, let's go back here to the toolchain setup. So at chapter five, the quick start, you, we can see how to um, yeah run the sample applications. So the first step was the synthesis design. And here, if we are using Verilog, we have to run the make file with the target synth vlog, but I have VHDL, so I have to run the target make synth VHDL. Okay, let's run this program and this will create our netlist, which we can find in the net folder here. So this is our netlist basically. Then the next step or the next optional step is we could run a simulation and we could run our test bench. For this, we could use the synth sim um, tool. This would run the um, test bench. And if we want to see the result with make wave, if we have GTK wave available, we could see the resulting waveform of our simulation. But I will skip these two sets and I will come directly to the implement design step. So when I'm running make impl, it will create the bitstream for us. So let's copy this and let's take a look what's in here. So not much, but if I'm running this command, it will create a lot of files in here. But the important one is this blink 00config.bit because this is the bitstream we can flash on the FPGA board. And in order to flash it, so for Windows, there is a fewer um, available here. On Linux, we can just use our make file. It's important we have to install the libftdi for being able to talk to our FTDI chip. So on Arch, yeah, you can just install the package libftdi and everything should work. And now we can run make jtag to flash the bitstream on our FPGA board. And let me turn on my camera again so you can see what's ongoing here. So if I'm running the command, you can see here now the LED is blinking. If I'm pressing this button, it is on all the time. And if I'm releasing the button, it's blinking again. But when I'm run running the make JTAG command, the FPGA is programmed. But when I power cycle or reset the FPGA with this reset button, yeah, the design is gone and the LED will stop blinking. So on this evaluation board, we have a SBI flash available. So if we want the design to start after the FPGA is, um, is powered on again, we can use the make SPI flash command to flash our bitstream into this SPI flash here. And then it's not wall. It's stored in the SPI flash and will be loaded on the boot of the FPGA part. Okay, cool. So this was a quick um, go through about how to install the toolchain for the GatePad FPGA board and how to run a simple application on it. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee in the comments for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.